we were very excited when, when we heard that Tracy was pregnant, first child, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we learned it was a girl um, before she was born. Mm -hmm. And then uh, up until she was six months old, Erin was perfectly healthy. There was no real sign to say that she had something that was different about her. Mm -hmm. And then um, at, at six months, the, the, we went for a checkup and the, the doctor said we should get some tests done because uh, there were a few little telltale signs that perhaps everything wasn't what it should be. Something in my gut as a mother told me that something was just not quite right. He was missing milestones, he was just not sitting up like he was, he wasn't lifting his head. Uh, we had a myriad of tests done, ECGs, MRIs, blood samples. His neurologist had some blood work done. And that was a very stressful time for us. He's perfect. What is going on? Why is this going on? And it was just really confusing. I just kept searching and searching and essentially um, asked a geneticist if we could then do genetic testing. So when we got the diagnosis, there was some relief that we had an answer, but um, you know, my, my first, my feelings immediately after that were feelings of, of anger, actually. Anger and sadness, it was just a combination of the two. I just remember sitting there in the genetic counselor office and I had Ryan in my arms and he was just, he was eight months old at that time. And I kept looking at him and he was asleep. And this is our kid who I have I had to work so hard to get him to nap in my arms because he wanted to be in his bed. Um, in his spot and he just fell asleep in my arms and was just so beautiful and so peaceful and so perfect and I kept on hearing all these things that they were telling me that were going to be the rest of our lives things that were going to be challenges and I remember just sitting there looking at him and thinking he was still perfect. Brendan is our third of four children um, so from the get-go um, I just knew something was not quite right with Brendan. And after uh, seeing four local neurologists and them telling me, just keep with your therapies, um, you know, and he'll continue to progress, just accept that it's a developmental delay, something in my gut as a mother told me that something was just not quite right. So I just kept searching and searching and essentially um, asked the geneticist if we could then do genetic testing. And um, when we got the call on July 28th of 08, um, I remember it very clearly, obviously, um, I was told that this is not good news. Kids like this are mentally retarded and dropped to my knees. There weren't positives tied into it. It was very, your child's probably not going to do this, they're not going to do this, they're not going to do this. And here's a pamphlet. We don't know much about this, um, but here's a pamphlet and hopefully you can learn more from them. And then for a couple of months we just needed to, to be. We, we hardly told anyone. It was a lot for us to digest and take in. It was difficult to understand this. Uh, Obviously, all the usual questions, why us, why our daughter? It was hard. Yeah. I would be lying if I said that his diagnosis was a breeze. It was very difficult on both of us. Um, and I think, you know, we both just kind of went into this little shell for a little while, and we just kind of went through the day. So I came home, and we talked and cried. And, you know, we pretty much said, we're, whatever it is, we're going we're gonna to have to deal with it. We love Brendan so much. We knew there was something wrong, and we finally have a diagnosis, but at least now we can address it or see what we can do going forward. And, and slowly but surely we realized that the, the, the little girl that we thought we were going to have, mm. the, the, the personality we had hoped to kind of see mm. as she got older, wasn't going to be. Um, a, a psychologist that we went to see basically described it as mourning the loss of someone in our family. The, the, the girl that we thought we were going to have in our life had kind of moved on. Mm. But the good news was we still had a, a beautiful little child mm. and we just had to get to know Erin for who she is going to be. 
you know, just to try and deal with something that we didn't even know how to pronounce at the beginning. And, uh, you know, I, everything just happened to fall in place for us where, all right, now we know what it is, let's, let's try and get on with it. And the Alliance was there right from the beginning. I think Ember was talking to Katie within 48 hours or something, and they helped us tremendously. From that moment forward, I knew that, you know, we had to just rise above and be strong and gather all the information we could. And within 48 hours of our diagnosis, we were in contact with the Alliance. It's okay to ask for help and people want to help. And when you give them that job of helping out a little bit, they get to know your kid and they can bring things out in your kid that you maybe weren't able to do. So accepting the help that's offered um, and being okay with not doing everything yourself. My advice would be to just let go of expectations and think about what you can do for your child and just not how your life is going to be affected. And that compassion is something that's just learned, you know, by and it's contagious to friends, family, uh, peers, and you know, it, it is a process. There, is, there are so many silver linings to having her in our life, and she really just makes the world a brighter, more beautiful place. And I don't think I'd, I would experience that with a, a neurotypical kid. Um, I say that with respect to neurotypical kids, but I really feel like Erin Erin does bring so much into our life. She really does. He's changed the dynamic of our family. You know, some people say, I don't know how you do it, but as a parent, you just do it. And I actually feel like we're the fortunate ones because Brendan has provided this feeling of love and um, hope that you can't, you don't see in many other families. When, when she does something that she wouldn't usually do, when she reaches a little milestone, for example, for us it's like Christmas, it's like... <laughs> it's like unwrapping presents that have just been it's, sitting there for years. Like you know? a little piece of heaven. So for yeah. us, those little experiences that other parents probably take for granted are just so special for us and that's what keeps us going. Mm. I also think it's brought us closer together. Yes. For sure. I mean, of course we love all of our children dearly, but I mean, we try to provide them everything they can, but with Brendan, we're just, you know, do anything for that kid. Yeah. Yes, he puts the word special in special needs. Mm -hmm. He is something else. <laughs>